Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. And in this mysterious episode of What Makes It Work, number four in the series, I'm going to talk about the Magic 8 Ball and what makes it work. The Magic 8 Ball has been around since the 50s, and in fact, it was invented in the 40s by uh, a man by the name of. Uh, Albert Carter, then he had a partner by the name of Abe Bookman, and they joined together and formed a company after they patented called Al Abe Crafts Company, and started manufacturing these, and I believe later on these were sold, and probably still are, by Mattel, and they must have sold millions of these, and the real beauty of these uh, is that uh, children do seem to like them, uh, at least for five minutes, but they take no batteries and that alone is a stroke of genius. The last two that I did in this series, number two and three, were uh, cutaways and uh, took a lot of time to make and uh, were laborious, although I enjoyed them. So I thought I'd do something that was easier and a little more lighthearted. So that's why I'm covering the Magic 8 Ball. And uh, now when you turn this over, as if nobody knows how this works, uh, do not shake it because that sometimes causes a bubbling, but uh, I'm going to ask the 8-Ball a question. And that is, will anybody watch this video? And it says, is, it is decidedly so. So all the answers were very vague like they are uh, in a horoscope or any other uh, nonsense like that or a fortune teller. And uh, But you know, there's still people that believe this stuff and are naive or stupid enough to think that a Ouija board has some kind of magic or uh, mystical powers, but uh, it takes all kinds of people. But let's see how this is made, and of course I'm going to have to sacrifice this thing and cut it apart, and uh, I'll be out the whole 25 cents that I paid for this at a garage sale. The construction of these is uh, simple enough. They're just an uh, uh, empty plastic ball filled with some kind of vile fluid that is uh, dyed blue and this one uh, seems to be defective or old or something but the the uh, the little floating device here doesn't always pop up in the correct direction and sometimes there's bubbles and you can't read it but uh, the first thing I will do is to drain it and see what that uh, despicable uh, liquid is so I'll drill a little hole right here is a vent, perhaps an eighth inch, and then I'll flip it over and a larger hole here and get that out. And then after it's pretty well drained, if it isn't too messy, I'm going to saw it in half on the band saw. I drain the fluid out of the eight ball. And I'm still not sure what it is. It has a faint odor, but not much. Looks like ink, but it is not very messy if you get it on your hands. So I suppose many of these have been uh, broken open and spilled onto living room carpets over the years. Already I realized the construction of these is totally different than I uh, originally assumed. I just thought it was a big ball. Not a big ball. It was this ball. It was hollow and filled with liquid and then that device that floats around. But it's, it's constructed totally different. Uh, you can see there's my drain hole, but I had to drill through several different uh, uh, containers or through this wall and into something else. So there's like a separate container in there for the uh, the fluid. And you can see that that thing doesn't bounce around much and it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. I would have assumed that it was all the way down here and could be moved any place in the ball, but that's not the way it is at all. So. A little more complex device than I had uh, anticipated and this will not pull out. I tried drilling that hole and, and pulling it out as an insert almost like a little jar in there but it doesn't come out so I'm back to sawing so let me go at it with a saw. I used a hand hacksaw to cut through it. Don't try that on a bandsaw. Not that anybody else in the world will ever do this, but don't try to cut something round or sphe spherical in a bandsaw. It's going to spin around and uh, throw it and catch your hands, break the blade, all kinds of nasty things, so don't even try it. But I haven't looked at it yet, I just sawed through it. Open it like a clam, maybe. And there it is. 
and you can see that I shouldn't have hit, drilled it until now. It's rather thick plastic. But inside the ball is this, uh, I'm going to call it a cartridge. And there's a support. Actually this thing is quite well made. No wonder they cost three dollars. Yeah, probably three dollars in 1957. And there it is. So there wasn't all that much liquid in there. Would you say that's about three ounces? Think about it in terms of a bathroom cup or you brush your teeth. And I don't know what this is all about, but something to support it, I suppose. There's the hole that I drilled through when I went through several walls, but I didn't know what I was drilling through at the time. Now I think I'll cut that open and get that out of there. And I think that there's, uh, ooh, I don't know, perhaps 20 different questions on there. There it is. Look at how that's made. Totally different than I would have expected and quite ingenious at that. So there's one, two, three, four, five. That'd be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 answers on there. Many more than I would have thought. And I love the way that goes together. Now, here's a question for you. You know what a tetrahedron is? And, you know, there's, all, there's different names for objects that have different numbers of uh, surfaces on them. So, somebody write in and tell me what uh, a 20-sided prism, I'm going to call it a prism, is called. Probably a duodecum or something like that. I don't know. I made that up. Am I wasting my time, or is this kind of neat? Perhaps there were many versions of this over the years, but here are uh, 20 possible answers that are inside of a Magic 8 Ball. So I don't know if there were different versions. There probably was no need to, to bother with that. But uh, again, all vague answers like a palm reader would give you. In review now, this is really a very well-constructed toy, and it's very thick and durable, and uh, unlikely that it would break or, uh, or get damaged by being thrown around, because you know children would end up throwing this. But again, opening it up, you can see that uh, we got some ribs in here that hold the cartridge in place so it can't move around, and then the cartridge is held you know, into this ring, and that's a separate piece that we'll pull out. Just a support ring, and, and it positions it. And again, ribs here that prevent it from going down any farther. But this is very thick, and almost like it's an ABS plastic, but I don't really know for sure. And it would have been molded in two pieces, and then after assembly, I suppose glued together some way and then you can see where it has been uh, trimmed or sanded or something uh, to, to make it smooth. And finally a silk screen must have put the 8 on there. One color only. Simple enough. And then this thing here, the cartridge, I can't tell whether the white is uh, one or two pieces. It must be two. But this must be the way it was filled. Perhaps uh, the ink was put in here and then sealed or self-sealing or something like that. This too is pretty thick in case you broke through the black plastic and then the children got into this. It's still sealed and it's not going to come open easily. So that's interesting construction and uh, engineering. 
for what seemed like a very simple toy. But to make millions of these, they had some pretty fancy molds, and I'd like to see the original blueprints, because you know there would have been drawings for all of this. And maybe I could find it in the patent. Somebody send me the patent number, and I'll look it up. I interrupt this video to uh, update you on the patent uh, for the 8-ball, and it was much later than I thought, but uh, they, supposedly he invented it in the 40s, but either there was more than one patent or it took that long to get uh, around to patenting it and refining it, and uh, there's the patent number, and the funny thing is it's not called a Magic 8-ball, it's called a liquid-filled dye agitator containing a dye having raised indicia on the facets thereof. So the actual patent date was 1964, again by Abe Bookman, and there are four drawings on the page. I will zoom in on each one so you can study it and uh, pause your video if you're in the mood. And there's a uh, Abe's name down there along with the patent attorney. This is figure one. Now often the patent drawings look nothing like the final product. I think you're familiar with that. There's figure two. And I always like the uh, penmanship and, and the drawings uh, made by these patent uh, uh, draftsmen I thought were interesting. There's figure three. And figure four for your uh, examination. And there were two pages I show you here of uh, description. And I suppose got uh, very detailed and it's all in legalese and you would not like reading it but you can you can look this up if you're in the mood with that patent number and find it quickly on the internet with that patent number Google do a Google search if you if you feel like it now those of you that are watching this be sure and uh, Call your children and show them the video. They might enjoy this because this might have some appeal to, uh, to boys and girls. I had to plug the hole. Let's put the specimen back in. Now if the hospital did this it would cost $400. But if you went to Walgreens it would only cost 40 You know what, I don't have enough in there to make it float. There, and you can see that it is buoyant. I'm trying to turn it around so I can read one of them. It says, Outlook Good. Did you enjoy this video? Outlook is good. Let me know if you like this and if I should continue with this series. And that's how the Magic 8-Ball works. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.